morning, everyone, and welcome. It is 9.31, and I do believe, Stu, up in Sky Fox, we have a pursuit underway, so fill us in where you are and what's going on. Well, this is going to be in the downtown Los Angeles area. It is a pursuit, and it is a very dangerous one for a lot of reasons. The driver is wanted for homicide, suspected homicide. That vehicle is stolen, and we've actually seen this vehicle crash already twice, three times. There you go. It, is it still going? And it's still going right there. You can see it making its move. Now, we are not allowed to get into that LAPD area. That's going to be in the LA, I'm sorry, the LAX airspace. But you see that vehicle continuing on. Now, the officers from, this is going to be LAPD. It's actually Southeast Division, uh, they're actually in pursuit. That vehicle continuing on now by itself, just because of the, they would probably have one unit stopping by to make sure that those people, the civilians, are okay. But you can see it right there. We're gonna keep the best eye on it that we can, but you have to remember we're not allowed in that area. Now it's starting to make another turn, but that vehicle definitely disabled already after several uh, accidents, you know, two that we saw before we went live, and then that one that we just saw just moments ago, making its way inside that neighborhood right there. And you can see it, we're gonna try to keep it the best we can. That vehicle is gonna give up before the driver. Again, this is a all over a the driver of that vehicle believed to be wanted for a suspected homicide that vehicle also stolen oh so scary you could see the oncoming traffic crossing the lane right there as that vehicle uh, in pursuit is kind of hidden by the trees at this point but certainly in an, a residential neighborhood which is never good especially at a high rate of speed or riding okay there it is on one of the main roads right now uh, you could see the smoke coming from the tires it look it looks like or yes that car. vehicle actually hit that, that vehicle actually hit a couple of other things before we went live, so there's definitely going to be damage to the front of that car. There's no doubt about it. The mm. fact that that car is still even driving is just, it, it, it's sad in a way because you just want to see this thing come to an end, that person go into custody, and nobody else get injured. But that driver deciding to continue to push it out oh. there, making his way, this is going to be westbound on the, I'm going to actually bring up that information for you right there. It's going to be westbound bound on Slauson coming up on Western. Let's see if he's going to try. He's still continuing on. So he's going to continue on Westbound as this pursuit is going to make its way away from us right now. We're definitely going to keep an eye on it, keep an ear on it, and do what we can to get that, get the shot for you, as it would be. Um, bringing up that information, we're going to bring up that speedometer as well, but right now the speedometer probably not going to be that good of information making another turn right mm. now and it looks like we're going to be going northbound but we're staying in that south los angeles area yeah well, it looks like uh ruth ellen street right there again into a residential area off of western it is a very residential area. That's going to be uh, St. Andrews now making a turn back towards us. Now we get to actually see some of that damage on that vehicle. Oh, okay, you can yeah. see that whole front end caved in right there. That front wheel is probably what's smoking. It's probably rubbing against something on the car. Now that driver, you know, that's part of the issue. Wanted for homicide, running from officers. You'd probably think, in the, oh, this could end in a very dangerous way. This driver definitely not giving up willingly probably going to wait till that car gives up and then well you know what we're going to have to wait and see what happens it's like i said lapd they're trained to handle these dangerous situations we keep an eye on it but what we're what i'm always personally worried about is anybody else out on the roadway the, the only positive right now is that that vehicle's moving very very slowly probably because of all the damage yeah exactly i mean it seems like and that's what it exactly looks like the car's just pushing its way to not stop, right? Barely hanging on there. That vehicle's gonna give up much sooner than the driver will, that's for sure. All we know at this point, Stu, is that there is one suspect possibly in this vehicle wanted for homicide. Definitely, that's what we know. We also heard them say that that vehicle is stolen as well. So those are, you know, two very serious offenses. Making his way through that food for less parking lot out there. It, 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 whenever they get into any kind of parking lot situation, I'm always hoping that they just keep going nobody gets hurt because sometimes especially somebody desperate like this there's always that possibility that per that driver that suspect might actually try to carjack somebody that's a stolen car already mm -hmm. so the, so the uh, 
possibility that this person trying to take a vehicle from somebody else is definitely in the cards as it would be. You got another shot of that vehicle coming at us right there. A lot of smoke coming off the front. LAPD in pursuit. And again, it looks like hopefully we're going to be making our way out of this parking lot. When we saw that car earlier on, what oh, is this guy uh -oh, doing? Uh -oh, no, uh -oh. look at that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you can see that front tire definitely flat. That car is going to be a front wheel drive. So the drivetrain might be given out shortly. If not, this pursuit's going to continue pretty you know, much as long as that driver is going to push it. What's scariest is when people have nothing to lose, right? So this individual wanted by police for homicide, potentially. Um, at this point, right, he, <clears throat> perhaps with a stolen vehicle in a pursuit, police after him this individual has really nothing to lose and that's where dangerous things can happen to innocent people you know it yes and that's what officers they they understand this they mm -hmm. know what is going on they and they are taking those precautions right now and also when this does come to an end wherever that may be we're definitely going to keep and be very vigilant on what's going on motions and activities <laughs> inside that vehicle and officers reactions to what is going on uh, you can see that front tire still smoking this vehicle seeming to stay inside this parking lot out here uh, this is right off of Slauson, the address, of the, the map is calling this Slauson and Manhattan Village uh, or over here by St. Andrews. But that vehicle, why he's staying in this parking lot? This is very, this, you know, I'm just worried. You've got a lot of people out there. You've got more crowds. They clearly know what's going on, those lights and sirens. Mm -hmm. So folks are starting to gather around to look and see what's, what's happening here. But again, this is a stolen vehicle. Like you said, that driver has nothing to lose right now. The possibility of them trying to take a vehicle from somebody else, that's in the cards. Oh. And this vehicle is picking up speed well. and driving kind of more erratic out here through that parking lot hitting those speed well, bumps but you could see the cars becoming more and more disabled falling look apart at the hood right there yeah. about to come off and the bumper as well and when you look at this you know we're no experts in terms of how to safely get this guy in custody but you wonder why doesn't the police kind of cut them off right because this guy is going in circles in this parking lot why don't you get in front of them but obviously law enforcement officials do know what they're doing they have a plan because they have to approach everything very sensitively and carefully considering there are innocent people down there other drivers pedestrians crossing roads uh, in that parking lot as well as not knowing what this driver may do or not do so it is you know, from our point of view, kind of uh, easy to say, hey, why don't you just corner him in the parking lot? But uh, mm -hmm. it's not so simple. Well, we don't know if this person's armed. Mm -hmm. So there, there and that is it's one of the concerns. Definitely one of the concerns, and one of the and one of the things is policy. LAPD has a lot of policies in place from these pursuits. They, the public has weighed in many times about how things are coming to an end, the, the, the fact that suspects may be placed in undue danger. And so they put policies into place, and one of those policies is really, truly, they are not going to block in a suspect. They're not going to set up a situation where that suspect is going to have to forcefully push his way out and then create a problem where there is an assault on an officer so mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why they don't get right in front of the vehicle another reason in this case this dr driver as a suspect in a homicide so they don't want to put officers in danger either this person apparently may have been involved in some sort of shooting at some time or homicide at some time we don't know what weapon they used but that doesn't that could mean that this person might try it again and if those officers block him in that the suspect gets into a desperate situation that might happen and so they really put a lot of thought into what's going on when there's chases are happening. And those officers from LAPD, highly trained. It isn't just, it isn't just what we see where just get behind them and chase them. It is not just that. These officers are trained to handle high tension situations and also, and also scenarios where, like you just said, you can't just block this car in. It would be pretty simple. As you've seen, this guy is, is really staying here at that Food for Less parking lot. We're going back in there again. I thought we were getting back out on the road. But that car continues to make these turns, driving out here, and uh, looks like we might be coming back out onto a major. But amazing how that little car just oh. keeps going this oh. morning.
opposite. Let's, this makes me nervous whenever there's potential for the vehicle to go in the opposite direction against other vehicles. But interesting that uh, this person stayed in that parking lot for quite a while. Almost a few times it looked like he was he or she was about to stop, right? Mm -hmm. Pull into a parking spot almost Bikes and coming at us. give up. Coming at us. But we're back into a residential neighborhood now. It's 9.40 <laughs> in the morning. I mean, people are still kind of making their way out of the house, you know, people are walking around. Southbound. Uh, this is what gets really scary and dicey. Mm -hmm. And it's not like what you see in the movies. As Stu was mentioning, there is protocol in place for a number of reasons, mainly for the public safety, for officer safety. And clearly, we all want a resolution to this, obviously, but uh, they have to do it in the best and productive, most safe manner as possible. And there you go. Uh, he's or the driver, he or she, picking up speed there, even in a disabled car that has hit a number of other vehicles throughout this pursuit so far, entering that intersection where there is a main strip right there, two-way traffic, and uh, making loops at this point, Stu. Uh, he just keeps making these big circles right here, and, and he was over at that uh, Food for Less parking lot. Now he's in that neighborhood nearby. A lot of times, it, these, you know, the driver, the suspect, and again, I have no inside information at all, might be on the phone and might be making phone calls and trying to oh, find out a way to hide up. In this case, he's out and running right now, and you can see this uh, suspect making a real go at it there. I almost want to bring up the speedometer, kind of get an idea how fast that person is running. About 15 miles an hour, and of course, underneath the tree, I saw it, he went southbound yep. right there. We're going to keep an eye on him. LAPD, the helicopter's making the calls right now to the guys on the ground, stopping, going through an alley. Way. And again, does he know this neighborhood? Is this where he's from? Up oh, over a fence. Wow, that guy's like a gazelle. And now he's behind this building. We're going to keep a wider shot, see if we can see where he goes. Yep, oh. there he is, continuing on, jumping through, or jumping over another fence right there. And the, the, up a little slower this time. Maybe that's a taller fence. And now we're between some buildings once again. We did see some officers nearby in that alleyway, but they have, do not know that this suspect is almost out onto the next street. Hopefully, somebody is hearing us right now you can see officers oh, oh. oh they're making contact hands are up and it looks mm -hmm. like this is coming to an end after quite a run and these well, officers joining the joining their brethren right there to take that suspect into custody i mean <laughs> uh best case scenario at the moment although what led up to this has not been a good case scenario at all we're talking about a homicide suspect here so obviously a very serious situation but Fortunate that they have this individual in custody at this time. And uh, you're watching it right here on Fox 11. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with more Good Day Daylight coming up.